Hello everyone, this is Hoda Ganji and in this video I'm going to show you how we can import a 2D AutoCAD file into Rhino and make a 3D model out of it. So I'm going to go to actually first tools, options for units. I want to set it on millimeters and put this on one. Um, I noticed that when you import a file from AutoCAD to Rhino, it works the best when both the AutoCAD file and the Rhino file are set to millimeters. Okay. Otherwise, there might be some little jumps at uh, the very small precision. So I want to go with millimeters and it's going to be uh, one for the absolute tolerance. We're not going to go lower than millimeters in precision. Okay, I'll go to file. Let's uh, be on the top view. I'm going to go to import and uh, see that we have two AutoCAD file here. The first one is in AutoCAD 2020. I'm going to open it. And you see that there is a problem because of the file version because my Rhino is Rhino 5 but my AutoCAD is AutoCAD 2020. So I'm going to actually uh, import the other AutoCAD file which is saved down in AutoCAD in 2013 version. I'm going to open this one and I already know that uh, the units of this file is on millimeters. Millimeters, that's good. Okay, and there we go. That's the file. You see as soon as we import the file, all the layers of the AutoCAD file are also here. You can turn them on and off. You can change the colors. Okay, so let's see something here. Notice that we have this set of grid here. This grid can be useful if you want to use like grid snap later, but you see the grid is so small uh, relative to what we have here. So I can do this. I'll go to tools, options, the same location that we had options for units, a little bit above that we have an option for grid. And uh, you see there are now 70 grids on each side. I can change it to like 5,000, any other number. And you see they're uh, actually one millimeters apart. So um, how about I go with 10 millimeters, which is one centimeter. You can go with uh, other values too. Or I can go, for instance, if I go with uh, 100 millimeters, the grid size is every 10 centimeters. How about I put this on 10, which is one centimeter, and I want to change the snap spacing for grid snap later to 10 as well. So it's going to snap every one centimeter, not every one millimeter. Okay. So now you see the grid is much larger. It's actually too large. I can go back there and change this to like 3000. Um, and it seems much better, even 2000 or 2500. 2000 is good. Okay, now the grid is there. Yeah, the grid is still so small, so I'm going to go back and change this to 100. Okay, now it's much better. If I change it to 100, uh, because they are far apart, I can also change this to 200, and the grid is going to fit the screen. I can start creating the walls now. So you can see that we have the wall layer here. I want to turn all these layers off except for the wall. And you see we have hatch too. I can turn off that one as well. So this is a wall layer. Uh, you can work on the set layer so you can make this the active one. Or um, we can also do that. For instance, let's create a new sub layer. I'm, I want to say that this is my Rhino wall, which is my 3D wall. How about I name it as wall 3D because I want to extrude uh, the walls over there. And I can change the color. Okay, now uh, all I need to do is just uh, select these items. And you know that, uh, as I showed you in the other playlist, uh, in my properties under aliases, I have imported AutoCAD shortcuts here. You can do the same. You can import your own shortcuts, which are more comfortable for you through the option. 
Okay, and now I want to select all the walls. I want to go with maybe extrude. And I want to show you two things. Uh, the first time, I want to just go with like 3 meters. And because the units are set to millimeters, I need to go with like 3000 or maybe 2800. So 2.8. Okay, uh, if I change the graphic display here, you see that now it's unshaded and uh, it's still following the color of that layer. So uh, I can actually change the color of the wall layer from here. And now you see that these are not capped, right? You see it's just hollow. If you want the extrusion to be capped, you actually need to change it to solid. So I want to go with extrude curve again. I'll go with solid yes. Okay, change this to yes. And now I want to enter 2800. Okay, it's much better. I want to change the color of this layer. Now you see that it's actually capped. All the surfaces are capped and it's working correctly. Uh, now for the windows, I need a little bit of the wall at the bottom and at the top of the window. So I want to create a cube, a box actually. I want to turn the O snap on and maybe I can turn the grid snap off. Okay, so I want to draw a box from there to there. And let's say this is going to be uh, like 0.4, which is 400 millimeters which is 40 centimeters for the seal height. Uh, in this case, the seal height is so low because uh, this side, I have the yard and everything, so I want the seal height to be low. Okay, we can keep going. Uh, we have a door here, and then we have another window here. You know that if you hit a space, it's gonna go with the last command again. So I want to create another one, uh, which was 400. You can keep going. I have two more windows here. There is a door over there. If you are not sure, actually it's a good idea to check the box for windows so you can see where we have the windows. 400. We need to do the same for the top of the window. I'm going to create a box here and I'm going to assign negative 400. Right, we can keep going. Actually, I need to do that for the top of the door as well. So let's say if this is the entrance door and it's like 2.2 meters and the height here is 2.8, I need to drop this part of the wall by 600. Okay, so 600 plus uh, 2200 is going to be 2800. Another box here, and I want to go with the same negative 400 for these ones as well. Negative 400, negative 400. We have another door here, and this one should be negative 600. And the last one here is negative 400. For these doors uh, inside, you see that the wall is a bit um, kind of tilted. If I go with the regular box icon, it's not going to be able to rotate that box. So I need to go with one of these options here, box with three points. I'll go with this one, one point, two point, three point. And now I just need to assign the height. This is an interior door. Let's say if it's 2.1 meters, 2.8 minus 2.1 is going to be negative 700 millimeters. Or actually, I need to assign 700 millimeters. So let's repeat it. 700. This one. 700 and that one. Okay, what else we have here? We have actually, if I turn the door layer on, 
So for this door over here, I want to go back to our regular box that we had. That one is easier. And I want to drop this one by negative 600. So the door height would be only 2.2. Uh, I can repeat it here. 600. Okay. Uh, you need to do this for the whole walls. Uh, then when the whole thing is complete, you can, let's just keep all only this layer. Uh, you can select the whole thing, okay, and you can go with BU or Boolean Union. The shortcut is BU, and the whole thing is going to be united, okay. And then I can select the whole thing, and I also want to merge all faces. Okay, so measure all faces. Okay, so now all the faces are merged. The good thing about this is that um, now everything that I have here and there you see continuous, they're basically kind of one single item. All right, so it's easier to select it, it's easier to assign materials and everything. I want to keep going, so I want to go to the same layer and uh, I want to create some more walls on this side. So here I have another window. I want to use a box from here to here. This side, the seal height is higher. For instance, uh, let's go with 800 millimeters or 80 centimeters here as well. This is the north side of the building and it's kind of opening towards the street. That's why I want to have a higher seal height. I'll go with 800 here and I want to go with 800 here as well. For the top, I want to drop this by the same value, negative 400, negative 400 here. negative 400 and negative 400 so this side is good too I have a couple of more uh, interior doors here there's one door over here notice that some of the doors are by mistake on the zero layer that's because they have been blocked so make sure that your zero layer is also on I want to consider negative um, 700 here so that door is going to be 2.1 we have two more doors here from here to this cor corner negative 700 and here negative 700 there is a door over there and of course we can change them later if you want so here on this part it's actually a greenhouse we're going to create it in the next videos and I also need to create a little bit of a space here too so I want to go with the box again I want to drop this part by negative 600 so the door is going to be 2.2 meters this one as well, negative 600, this part as well, uh, when it's all done you can turn the other layers off so we only have the wall layer, select everything, go with BU and go with merge all faces, uh, so if you select somewhere and it's going to select the whole thing that shows you have done a good job a correct file if you click somewhere and it doesn't select the whole thing you need to check all the corners to see which part uh, you might have had a mistake in the next videos we are going to continue with creating door and windows